are ready to go. Good afternoon and welcome. I am Trudy Murata, a volunteer with uh, a volunteer community ambassador, I should say, with AARP here in Northern Virginia. And from our earliest beginnings, AARP has championed lifelong learning. And that's why AARP is thrilled to bring you our third year of Tuesday Explorers, the lifelong learning program offered every Tuesday from January until the end of April at three o'clock East Coast time for our curious explorers. For more than 60 years, AARP has been a wise friend and a fierce defender, helping individuals to ensure that their money, health, and happiness live as long as they do. AARP has earned a reputation as a wise friend and fierce defender through trusted information, tools, and advocacy designed to protect the health and financial security of older Americans and empower them to choose how they live as they age. By promising to act as this wise friend and fierce defender, AARP is helping people who are 50 plus and their families feel confident, in control, and secure as they age. And as this wise friend in your corner, AARP helps you protect yourself and your loved ones from frauds and scams through our Fraud Watch Network, get healthy and stay healthy, care for loved ones, make connections, plan a trip, learn new technologies, attend a class, and have fun like what we're doing here today with our Tuesday Explorer program. So I hope you'll continue to take advantage of these opportunities and more. And I am going to turn the program over to my AARP colleague, Lily Lou. Lily Lou, I'm gonna give the platform over to you. Thank you, Trudy. Hello, everyone. I must first thank Trudy. She is truly the best ambassador for the concept of community service at AARP. We've been all about volunteerism from the very beginning in 1958, and I cannot think of a better partner to go on this exploring trip with. So thank you so much, Trudy, for that warm welcome. And thank you for all you do each and every day. Before we begin the program, I do wanna give a shout out to Amber Sultani, our staff colleague. She is the Pied Piper for all of us here in Virginia. She is the one that has provided us with this opportunity, especially the Tuesday Explorers, which is a wonderful lifelong learning possibility. Thank you all for joining us. We're already at the halfway mark of the 2024 season for this January and February programming. And so they will put in the chat, the video recordings of the ones that you might've missed or would like to see again. So you'll see those pop up in the chat. Today, I am so, so honored to be able to greet and thank our guest speaker. Hello, Dr. William Marr, how are you? Thank you, I'm fine, thank you. It is truly an honor to have this distinguished contemporary poet literally renowned all over the world who's writing in Chinese, English, doing translations, doing art, doing sculpture. The reason that we wanted to invite Dr. Marr, William Marr, M-A-R-R, -R, his pen name in Mandarin Chinese is Fei Ma. You mentioned that name and everybody goes, oh, he is so famous. But I wanted to invite Dr. Marr because he truly is living the example of what AARP's founder, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus envisioned, not retirement, but refirement. And today you'll hear his wonderful personal story about how in retirement, he turned to other interests. So first, let me just give Dr. Marr a chance to say some greetings to everyone, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your invitation. Uh, recently, I enjoy and enjoy very much some online events sponsored by AARP. Uh, I think these kinds of activities are very meaningful, especially for people in retirement or about to retire. Yes. Okay, so I'm very happy to uh, talk uh, to uh, uh, talk something about retirement. Uh, to everybody, it's uh, with my own experience. 
Thank you. That is exactly why we invited you, because you have a wonderful shining example of what brings meaning and purpose in retirement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen because Dr. Marr has prepared some beautiful poems for us to enjoy. And also, while I'm doing that, I would like to thank the young woman who had invited him and gotten um, me introduced to Dr. Mar, Jenny Xia Gao. She's a local friend and she's a young poet. And she said, oh, we are able to invite Fei Ma, Dr. Mar. So thank you, Jenny, for bringing Dr. Mar into my universe. So this is a picture of one of Dr. Mar's paintings. And we thought it's beautiful because I think retirement is a new stage of life and it's both a sunset and a sunrise. So Dr. Mar, please take it away and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, thank you. Well, why don't we let's start with my uh, home retirement and then let's start from there, well, that's not. Okay, that sounds wonderful, because he had um, always been working as a nuclear scientist, but decided to take early retirement. So this is a, one of his beautiful poems. Okay, uh, I wrote this uh, the poem after I take my early retirement in the 1990s, uh, 1996. And uh, the two, two sections here, one, Finally, you can call the clouds, the birds, the squirrels, the flowers, the trees, and millions of other things by their first name. As now he too is qualified for membership in ANRB, the Association of Never Retired Beings. Two, what's an empty step? He's surprised to find under his feet the exercise twill in the cage has turned into a firm level ground where children after school cheeringly scatter to find their own life adventure. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, my, my view of retirement, at least for myself. <laughs> That's okay, uh, let, let me read the, uh, the same poem in Chinese. I think it's the only one I know in Chinese. 退休者之歌一終於能直呼雲、鳥、松鼠、花、樹以及萬物的名字因為他現在也有資格參加他們那個永不退休者俱樂部 二,一腳踩了空,才驚喜發現,腳下落落轉動的輪子,已伸展成一片。寬坦的石地,在它上面,放了學的小孩,幫教著奔向各自的生命探險。Oh, that's so interesting. <笑> Cited in your native language, your heritage language. Wow. Cited uh, in both. May we hear some more? Because after retirement, we were making the joke. So many people say the spouse is now underfoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The uh, next uh, poem I'm going to read. Well, actually, I wrote this poem when I took my early in 1996 after working 27 years at the Argonne National Laboratory in Energy and Environmental Systems Research. And the next poem I'm going to read is called Autumn Window. As my wife and I grew older, I feel a sense of maturity in our life. Autumn Window. Now that she's middle-aged, my wife likes to stand before the window and comb her hair. Her only makeup is a trace of cloud, the landscape of a graceful, poised maturity. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the... May I take a moment to say that what's so interesting is because Dr. Marr was based 
because of his profession in the Chicago area. That was how he first started writing. And in retirement, got into the different groups that were poets and artists and literary people there. And so Gwendolyn Brooks, you know, the U.S. Poet Laureate noted Dr. Marr early on. And as the Illinois Poet Laureate pointed out, and this is what she had said, is that Marr's voice, Dr. Marr's voice is refreshingly strange and he can undoubtedly bring some of his unique cultural heritage and experience into the American poetry scene. And you indeed have done that. Well, thank you. Now, this, this, the, uh, this, the uh, Autumn Window is one of my own favorite poems. I also have a painting with the same name, which was used as the cover design of my Autumn Window, my first collection of poems in English, published in 1995. Uh, the, uh, the books right now is still available on Amazon. But, uh, if, if you would like to read my Actually, it's I, I published thirty some books, uh, so far. But Autumn Window is still my one of my favorite. I think because the first one, first book, and also entirely in English. Later on, I published most of them in uh, bilingual or Chinese or bilingual, Chinese and English. Okay, but this is the only one that in English. So I think uh, you, if like uh, to get it. Amazon is still available, okay? Yeah. All right, now, uh, my wife and I came to the United States from Taiwan in 1961. Both of us received a master's degree from Marquette University in Milwaukee in 1963. Uh, mine is in mechanical engineering and she's uh, hers is in uh, chemical engineering. I then worked in the design of nuclear reactor safety systems for a power company in Milwaukee for four years and returned to school and received my PhD degree in 1969 from University of Wisconsin Medicine. They, uh, Although I enjoyed my scientific work very much, I somehow considered it a career or a job and felt something was missing in my life. That feeling could probably be traced back to an interesting grade school experience when my teacher put one of my comp compositions into the form of a poem and posted it on the bulletin board, which interested many people, including my uncle. He would recite it to his friends in front of me. That really is, uh, uh, give me less, uh, so much joy. Anyway, poetry became my uh, important uh, an element in my life ever since, ever since. And I spent most of my leisure time reading poetry and got to know some Taiwanese poets before I came to this country. One of the poets later became the editor of a poetry magazine in Taiwan and asked me to translate Western, especially American poetry into Chinese and had them published regularly in his magazine. Later, I joined the Illinois State Poetry Society and was elected to, the, to serve as, a, as its president in 1993 and actively engaging in local writing groups uh, activities. As I get older, I felt I needed more time and decided to take an early retirement and it opened a new stage for my life. Yes, that was why we wanted to invite you because um, you present a, a different role model, someone who after having you know, made a living and raised a family, 
decided to do something for yourself. And now, um, you know, from this uh, feature about you in 1996 in the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Trib, to now it's been almost 30 some years of following your own passion. Um, you're you're going to give us so many wonderful poems. Uh, of course, retirement also gave you time to travel, you and your wife. So the next group of poems will be about your inspirations based on where you had traveled. Thank you. Start yeah, with you. Without any doubt, the poetry really en enriched my life a lot. It not only me it makes me my retirement life more fun, but it also broadens my view of the world and provides online contact with friends known and unknown all over the world. Some poets from France, Italy, and Israel even translate some of my poems and publish, publish them in Europe. Mm -hmm. Besides writing poetry, I have also been engaging in painting and sculpting. After I read some of my poems, I will show you some of the, my paintings and sculptures. I love to travel. My wife and I enjoy many sightseeing tours all over the world. Many of my poems were inspired by this experience. After retirement, we continue to travel a lot. I also visited many interesting places online or rev uh, revisited places where we visit before by looking at the photos we took or the poems I wrote. Here I found that I would like to share some of the poems with you. Now the first poem I'm going to read is the, called The Great War. Now, uh, this ancient war built by, of early earth, built of earth and rubble with a facing of brick and stone runs from east to west across China for over 4,000 miles. It was built to protect from foreign invasion from the north. The wall is often referred to as the divine dragon by Chinese people. The Great Wall, one. The struggle between civilization and barbarism must be ferocious. See this great wall. It twists and turns with no end in sight. Two, what better to climb the rigged ridge and to look long and hard through the self-adjusting planes at the skeleton of the dragon sprawling miles and miles in the wasteland of time. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is powerful. The, uh, the next part I'm going to read is called the Yellow River. Now, Yellow River is the second longest river in China after the Yangtze River and the sixth longest river system on Earth at the estimate length of over 3,000 miles. Flooding of the river has also caused much destruction, resulting in the death of over 1 million people. So uh, I wrote this poem, Yellow River. Dump into this old river the sufferings of one, the sufferings of two, the sufferings of hundreds, the sufferings of millions. Let it swell and flood over the vast territory of the sleepless pillow and changes its courses a thousand times between midnight and dawn. Now, mm -hmm. the uh, second stanza is talking about I was sleeping, but I cannot sleep. Waking and think of the the uh, 
tragedy of river, uh, yellow rivers, my tears flowing out. That's the uh, second standard of a boat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, we also took many tours to Europe. Here are a couple of them, poems. The first one is for entering Venice on a rainy day. Uh, we, as we step off of our tour bus, the passionate Venice greeted us with her embracing tender little arms. But the ladies were well prepared. They took the umbrellas out of their traveling bags and hooked the mates of twinkling eyes and gaping mouth, holding them back to the senses. <laughs> that is so playful. That is wonderful, <laughs> Dr. Mar. <Mar. laughs> I like to write poems, put some humor on the uh, uh, in poems. So that's uh, this is one of them. That's one. Okay. <laughs> okay, the next poem is called Trevit Bunton. It's also in uh, uh, in the uh, Venus. I saw you in Roman holiday years ago. But you are much thinner now. Today is Monday. Both you and your master have a day off. The she horses make no waves nor the treason and the chariot. Wishing for a happy return, I stand with my back towards you. I stand in the mo uh, movie and quickly toss three, five hundred lira coins. Hoping they won't devalue it too badly before they hit bottom. <laughs> So now, the, year, the year we we, we visited Italy, there was a very severe economic depression. The exchange rate of the in the of the bank changed a lot in the morning and in the afternoon. So I write this here that uh, I, I hope that uh, the coin who hit the bottom it won't devalue too much. That is brilliant. It really reflects <laughs> the times. So clever. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, next one, we also uh, visit Russia uh, in 2007. One, all state to the sky, the, in, the magnificent domes, winter palaces, summer palaces, big palaces, small palaces, my upward looking eyes suddenly become blurred as drops of sweat and blood flying through the dim air of history splatter on my face. I'm thinking of the, uh, you now they build so many big uh, palace, palaces in history that uh, so much uh, people devoting the kind of work. So that's the one of the uh, two. It only took me a few days to get used to the grandiose dreams of Imperial Russia. The imposing columns, the onion domes, the magnificent churches, the even more magnificent palaces. The biggest cannon, the heaviest bell, the tallest statue, and in the five-star hotel, the instrumental mountable bathtub, the elevated toilet. In fact, it was the homely American toilet that plunged me back to Earth. <laughs> 
the surprise ending. Well, as a family caregiver, I know it's important to, you know, take self-care. So we'll let Dr. Mar get a drink of water and <laughs> let that sink in. Trudy, are there any feedback comments in the chat? Um, you know, the audience is more, our uh, participants are more than welcome to put in some feedback. Any questions? Uh, yes, we do have one question for Dr. Marr. And that is, did you ever consider studying literature and or art instead of science? And do you have any regrets? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, well, I also like the uh, industry because uh, when I was young, uh, we, I lived in the, uh, the Southern China, a village in China, Southern China, very poor. Okay, and uh, uh, live, life is very difficult. And I saw occasionally the ship, the, the uh, steam ship passing by a uh, uh, village. And at that time, I said, I'm going to be an engineer. I want to, you know, uh, try to help develop the country and make people uh, living better. So I I never thought of uh, making uh, 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 as a uh, uh, writer or anything, but it's my interest. That's all. Yeah. That's a wonderful answer. That's actually a great role model for those of us that we can continue to do things and keep learning. That's the message of our whole series for the Tuesday Explorers is lifelong learning. That was great advice, Dr. Marr. Thank you, Trudy, for that excellent question from one Lily, of our- Lily, can I, can I ask one other question of Dr. Marr? Sure. <laughs> and, and that is uh, from one of our guests. Uh, they love the poetry and some must be written for his wife. What is Dr. Marr's wife doing in her retirement? And is she also a poet or an artist? No, she's not a poet, but she's an artist. We, we, uh, we took painting lesson after the retirement together. And actually her painting is much better than mine. Okay, and uh, but she would she's so humble, she wouldn't even let me uh, exhibit with her painting. She just uh, like a painting, you know, so just doing the painting, that's all. Yeah, then play piano. We also took piano lesson too uh, together, but she's a very good pianist, and uh, I, I, I'm a very poor pianist. Yeah, so but uh, she said, enjoy her work and housework and. Uh, you know, she liked to uh, uh, work in the garden. She liked nature. She liked flowers, you know, vegetables, that kind of stuff. So Thanks. that's why I think it's a good combination. If we both uh, writing, that's too much for a family with two writers <laughs> together. <laughs> that's so wonderful question because retirement is shared often and that that is just wonderful that each of you have pursued your own passions exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, well, let us continue with your wonderful poetry the next type that you're sharing with us is something more within the domestic travel that you've yes. done yeah here is a two point for uh, for historical sites we visit in the united states the first one the memorial day at Arlington, someone unknown goes down. The thousands, the thousands who have gone down in faraway fields, but who won't die in the hearts. How do we bury the thousands? Mm. I wrote this, this poem after I visited the memorial, I mean, the uh, 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 Arlington Memorial site. Yeah. The poem was the, in this, I think, appeared in the, uh, uh, let me see now. Uh, the, there's a website, a new, uh, uh, I forgot, but anyway, it's, uh, it's the, the veterans' website, many veteran websites around the country. You uh, put the poem, this poem appear in the website too. Beautiful, this is so powerful. 
And if anyone on our program today is a veteran, we honor and thank you for your service. The next one is Vet Vietnam Veteran Memorial. Oh, I wrote this one here too, after I, we visit the Vietnam Veteran Memorial. A block of marble in 26 letters of the alphabet etch so many young names onto history. Wandering along amid the mass grave, an old woman has at last found her only child, and with her eyes tightly shut, her trembling fingers now filled with a mortal wound on his ice cold forehead. Ooh. Let's just let that sit for a moment. That is so beautiful, so, so touching, Dr. Mark. So beautiful. Well, you know, I, I really, I, I really, I guess, all, any kind of war, you know, is, is too much for, the, for people, for the human beings. But, you know, we, there's so many tragedies. But I think, you know, Vietnam War Memor Memorial, I think is something that uh, worth our worship, you know, people sacrifice their own life, and especially families, you know, they all, you know, so I think, yeah. Well, the power of the pen, mightier than the sword. So keep writing, keep writing. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. I believe loving nature is a condition and the best reward for a poet. I've written quite a few poems on this topic, so I'm going to read some of the poems in nature. The first poem of dandelions. The horizon is so far away that the dandelions make their roaming dream a relay event from generation to generation. Mm. Why well, is very short poem, so, but I think you know that uh, there is uh, hopefully uh, the meaning is endless. Okay? Because uh, you, you can see that every year the dandelions grow up and then the next year you know, keep coming year after year. So I wrote this poem for that. One of our audience has remarked that she loves the way Miss Arlene has said, she loves the way you look at the world as I think all of us do on this event with such a playful view, you know, and, and very current thoughts, very. Okay, and then the next poem is called Fireflies. Quietly you light up a brilliant summer night not the illusion of neon lights, nor advertising anything. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> oh, and the pandemic has led you to creativity. This one, I can't wait to hear you recite. Okay, now the COVID-19 has changed our life quite a bit. According to a uh, news report, Many people in Japan have found that after wearing masks for three years, they can no longer smile. They must seek help from professional smile consultants. After I read the news, it prompted me to write this poem. Smile. Trap in mass for three long years. Many people can't remember how to smile anymore. Should eyes be open or closed? How about the mouth? And should the eyebrows and mouth corners be lifted up or pulled down? There's really no need to open uh, to spend money to find a smile consultant. 
Just go outdoors and look at the flowers blooming with innocent smiles from the ground that was once covered with heavy snow and ice. <laughs> this is wonderful. Spoken like someone truly living in the Chicago area. <laughs> <laughs> um, this might be a good one for us to have a little mini tutorial, Dr. Marr. Uh -huh. Do you write something down and then go back and edit? Or do you just dash it off and that's it? Do you have any technique? Oh, I, I, I write quite a bit too. You know, I write a poem. The way I write poems is, is most time, most time, I wrote it in Chinese. And right after that, I translate in English. Oh. And after the translate, then the translation, I found something that could be revised, you know, made it better. Then I translate back to Chinese, oh. so back and forth, until I really satisfy with both versions. Then the poem is complete. And also, I enjoy the uh, uh, the uh, United State Poetry Society workshop every month. We have a workshop and uh, we get together at the coffee house and then we talk about uh, each other's poems and make suggestions. So I found that very helpful and uh, we're still doing that essay yesterday. I just came back on a day Sunday. I just came back Sunday from the workshop too. You know? We really like it that way. Great idea, because um, so many of the cities and towns around the United States do have formal classes or informal. So you're really giving us an idea that lifelong learning is not only possible, but really something that you have pursued. Thank you. Yes, that yes, yes, yes. Nice. Very nice. This one intrigued me. Um, what led you to talk to a tree? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me read it first. I love between a tree and a poet. A tree says, we are more fortunate than humans. Without having to write a away a lifetime for the chance of transmigration, we die in winter and rejuvenate in spring. A poet says, winter and spring, night and day, every heartbeat, every breath, every blink, all are my transmigrations. I die in an obsolete verse and am reborn in a brand new form. Wow. Wow. You know, Dr. Mar, this is interesting because um, one of our audience members had said that when she, Leah Leah said, when she visited the Vietnam Memorial, it was so moving to her and it left her speechless. So between the time, let's say you see something on, on a trip or you have an idea for a poem and then you sit down, it's sort of like the ending to this, you have a brand new way what will make you want to write a poem? You know, what made you want to write about it? And maybe was it a long time after the trip or were you dashing it off at the hotel that night? Well, uh, most time, I think it's uh, right away. I mean, uh, uh, when I see something that, uh, you know, I get some idea and uh, I usually write down something and uh, I can revise later, yeah. Okay, that's good advice too. Okay, and the uh, next form is called bridge. Claps together, intimate and tight. We really don't care, uh, do know, no care. Who was the first to extend a hand? Now you look at the bridge <laughs> that uh, you really don't know which way they come from? Is that from this side or from that side? You know, but uh, to me, that uh, you know, both reaching out to each other, just like uh, human beings that uh, we try to reach out to each other. Yes. Yes. Now this poem appeared in Oxford English, an international approach student book two in two thousand nine. They saw it. They read it 
on, on online, I think, from uh, my website, and then uh, ask me if my permission for my permission to be used in the book. I yeah. really appreciate that. No, it's very what, short, but I think it's uh, probably you know for should be a lot of inspiration for people that uh, you know uh, this is the way to establish human friendship or even between the country or no, that kind of stuff. Excellent. Well, this is one of the reasons we wanted to have this Tuesday Explorers program because Amber Sultani, the AARP Virginia brainchild behind all this said, you know, during the cold winter months, how can we build a community? And I just thank Hi. everyone for coming on. For example, one of our uh, audience, Karen Svetka, I think is how we pronounce her name, um, said that she's getting great vibes listening to your, you know, masterful <laughs> poem. And it's, it's really true. And how fortunate your wife is. Uh, I believe Mrs. Marr is Jane. Yeah. It, um, had to have you, I bet you wooed her with your poetry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the form, this form is called Sharing an Umbrella. Sharing an Umbrella, I suddenly realized the difference between us. The bending over to kiss you gives me such joy as you try to meet me halfway on tiptoe. <laughs> oh I, my God. I wrote this poem in 1976 when I was 40 years old. Now many people consider it a uh, love form and it has been collected into several love poetry anthologies in China and, and Taiwan. The poem shows the image of a couple kissing each other under an umbrella. One lower is head, one greeted on tiptoes. But it can have much deeper and broader interpretations. For example, we can imagine the lovers as any individuals, racial or religious groups, or different nations. Under various circumstances, they try to have mutual accommodation and tolerance. This will make the world more peaceful and beautifully nice. Not only they, they, they won't get wet under the rain, but there will be no conflicts or even bloody wars in this world. And this is one of the responsibilities of a poet, is that you not know, try to promote love uh, between people. Beautiful. Now, I find when people, one time I, I shared this poem, and then uh, there's one uh, audience that raised their hand and said, wait a minute, how can you be so, uh, no, uh, how can you assume that the, uh, you always taller than the, your wife. How come you can always feel, assume that the man is always taller than the woman? Because <laughs> you, you lower your head, you lower, bending your over to kiss the girl, but she has to stay, uh, meet you on tiptoe. So you're discriminating. <laughs> I say, <laughs> that's, that's not the way I try to write this here. I say, well, you know, any 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 two person that each other try to accommodate each other. That's all. That's the perfect symbolism. Let us <laughs> and let Dr. Mar get a drink of water and just hydrate. Okay. <laughs> and if Trudy had noted any other um, comments in the chat or any other questions. I think what's so lovely for me is to not only think about what Dr. Marr has been able to accomplish in retirement, or as the AARP founder loved to call this period of life refirement, but that someone trained as a nuclear scientist is now really bridging the world with love and happy vibes. <laughs> uh, happy vibes is the uh, perfect uh, lead in because one of our guests has said, what good vibes they're feeling as they listen along with the masterful poet, 
Mr. Barr. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So much to think about. And it just brings a smile to my face, mask or no mask. <laughs> That's great. We knew that we wouldn't have time for everything. So as a bonus, because this is a lifelong learning platform, we will be sharing this slideshow. And at the end, there will be other poems that we will share. And also, I'm sure people are curious, you know, how were these poems collected into editions? And so I'm really grateful to Mr. Marr, Dr. Marr, for giving us some of the covers of his work so that we can see how the different collections were out there because you've written so much. I actually copied the Wikipedia list of your publications and I had to use two slides because you've done so much. But now we peek into his artistic talents and you actually talked about it in a way with um, a poem. Hmm. Well, you know, my poem is very short. Most of my poems are very short. And uh, sometimes people told me that uh, when they first read it, uh, they don't quite understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, when I work at Argan, a colleague of mine, uh, she, she said she really liked my poems, but uh, you know, just take a while for him to uh, get the uh, meaning. And one day he came to my office and said, hey, I got it, I got it. I said, what you got it? <laughs> here I found the, the, the reason you, uh, you know, uh, for this poem, you know, so I think it takes a while to, uh, for most most poetry, I think, you know, you, sometimes you can, depend on your life experience, that you can see deeper on the shadow, that, that, that I think is all depending on your experience, okay, so, but anyway, now beside poetry, I also love music and painting. But music, I expect music, I, I like uh, especially classical music. Like right now, every day, morning, evening, uh, at night, when, before I go to sleep, I always turn on the uh, radio, listening to classical music. Okay. But learning music is take a long time, you know, much more time than anything else. So I kind of give up. But for painting, it's the worst course I ever had since my grade school. I just, so I, I also gave up too, but I thought uh, I would never have any chance of uh, becoming an artist until several years ago, a friend of mine, he's, uh, he's a, a well-known poet and artist in Taiwan came to visit me in Chicago. And we talk about paintings. He said, anybody can be an artist as long as you like to learn. He himself is an example. That really give me some last encouragement. So after that, after retirement, uh, I asked my wife and I to uh, take a, a uh, a lesson, a painting lesson with a well-known artist from China, uh, Zhou Brothers. I don't, I don't know anybody heard their name. Zhou Brothers, they're very, very famous in, in in Chicago here. But anyway, so we took the uh, 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 class, and after that, I spent lots of time. Uh, we both spent a lot of time doing painting, and I really enjoy it. And later on, I found that sculpture in bed even more fun than painting because I you most time I use some crap, a scrap, lots of stuff I want to throw away, but I kind of hate to do that. So, but anyway, then I use that for the for the sculpture. I do really lots of fun for that too. So anyway, I will show you some of them. Uh now here's the poem I write about paintings. Painting lessons. Not every, uh, not every evening grow is ablaze with desire. Not every melancholy patch of sky 
is a primary color. Each glittering leaf in the sun has its withered yellow light, life story. Each roaming cloud is watched by a tiny pallet face in the window. On the resplendent and resplendent palette of the world, he mixed and mixed, knowing sooner or later he will come up with a color that even God will envy. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's why I took the uh, pending lessons and wrote this in here to kind of encourage myself that uh, you have to do it over and over again. Okay, let's. Uh... Now I would like to share with you some of the uh, my painting and sculpture. The first two paintings are entitled "Sunset," along with the poem uh, "The Setting Sun." Finally, his fierce gaze becomes so mellow that even an ordinary man like me. There to stare. His bloodshed eye will not close completely till the last bird returns safely to the woods. Oh, fascinating. There is a tradition in Chinese uh, literature to call. Um, that there is a painting in the poem and there is a poem or poetry in the painting. I think it's Hua Zhong Yo Shi, Shi Zhong Yo Hua. Yes. Mm -hmm. As a you know, literary scholar and an artist to put the two together, this, this is beautiful. Just yeah, well, I, I, you know, when I do the painting, I usually think of poetry too, okay? And that's why uh, a couple of years ago, a poet in New York, a, 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 a lady that uh, she's a good poet. Anyway, she saw my paintings and she wrote a poem for each painting. Oh. And we we, uh, she, we published the book. I'll show you the uh, publication later on that, uh, that I inspired her to write the poem. And she, yeah. So, okay. Uh, this one here, uh, let's see. Yeah, the autumn window is the- Autumn window on the left, okay. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, oil on wood. It's right in front of my uh, my uh, my desk, okay. I, I saw it every day. <laughs> I really like it myself because uh, it, it, uh, the first, almost my first painting on mm -hmm. wood and oil. So it's kind of a, a very, very interesting. The second one is My Mona Lisa. It's, you can see the face at all, but it's mine. My, <laughs> I can put anything on it, okay, in my imagination. So uh, the, sec the next one is Night Life. It's mixed media. Yes. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the next one, the base of flowers. It also mixed media too. You are just as playful with painting as you are with poetry. Oh, I love girl in moonlight. Wow. <laughs> girl in moonlight. Yeah, that's that I. So I wrote poem, a poem for this one here too, but I, I didn't bring it. But anyway, uh, the next one is uh, meditation. It's a uh, mixed media. I use a lot of mixed media because the oil is kind of hard to clean. After mixed media, it's very easy to wash it by, with water. So I usually use mixed media more. I see. This one here is You Are the Wind. Mm. Fascinating. Well, we don't want to end without letting you talk a little bit about your fascinating sculptures, which <laughs> are 
made with scraps that you find around. Uh, yeah. This one is fascinating. The one where you actually took the scraps and uh, made something out of it. Oh my goodness. Okay. A slender lady. I use it here. The, uh, the, uh, up there, you can see that the old plastic and the, this, uh, uh, the wire. Okay. And then, but the bottom is a clock. The clock that uh, is, uh, is, uh, is dead. So I, uh, I had to throw away really pretty clock, uh, 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 the glass and plastic. So I use as a vase. So this one here. Slender lady, bang. From the waist stump, she jumped out. My childhood playmate, who has played hide and seek with me for most of my life. No rose or lipsticks, not wearing gold or jade. Elegant and graceful, making my eyes and heart shine at the same time. A slender lady. Two. Thank you for making me suddenly young and serene in these dark, plague days. Three, dark clouds in the sky, the haze on the ground, the fog in my mind, or scrambling to jump into the cosmic rubbish dumps waiting for a great artist to sculpt an eternal masterpiece. Wow. I would just like to, before we um, end this, to thank Dr. Marr, and he'll have a few minutes for final greetings to everyone, but I would just like to thank you, sir, because you are giving all of us the impetus, the bravery to try things out in refirement and also to just do it, right? Just jump in and do it. So one of our audience has truly expressed what I have felt since getting to know you. You truly are a Renaissance man. <laughs> so, um, everyone will be getting this um, as a you know a slide uh, show to look at the poems in depth. But please allow me to let you greet the audience in you know final few words. Okay. Dr. okay. Yeah, I have found the uh, creation of poetry, painting, and sculpture to be extremely satisfying endeavors during retirement. Everyone has an activity or a subject they love. And I encourage each of, us, uh, each of you to consider what makes you truly happy. What brings you peace? and what adds meaning to your life. These things are different for all of us. I love the process of taking ideas and putting them into words or a painting or a sculpture to make something new that never exists before. My wonderful wife, Jane, takes great satisfaction in gardening in her retirement creating beautiful uh, beauty through her flowers and delight for our family with delicious vegetables. Please take a few mo moments in the coming years or days to consider what you would like to explore during retirement. I just know that if you do, you will find inspiration to make the most of this very special time of life, a fun retirement. My very best wishes to everyone and thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. This hour with you, I, I speak on behalf of myself and from the comments that I see from all of our guests. Um, this hour with you has been so beautiful, so peaceful, so amazing. 
Um, so on behalf of myself, our guests, and AARP Virginia, I would like to thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for sharing your time today, uh, sharing your artwork, sharing your knowledge with us this afternoon. It just goes to show we can do amazing things, even in retirement. Yes. <laughs> so our Tuesday Explorer program will continue next week. We invite you to join us. You can take a look at what we've got coming up next week and beyond um, at aarp.org slash Virginia events. And until next time, we encourage you to stay curious, keep exploring, and hopefully I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Dr. Marr, thank you so thank much. You. Lily, thank you for finding him. Ha, 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 ha.